On the borderlands between Rhode Island and Massachusetts, a deserted field sits in the shadow of Bourne Mill. On that forgotten patch of grass once stood the first soccer-specific stadium in the United States. This is the story of Mark's Stadium, the cradle of pro soccer. The area along the border between Massachusetts and Rhode Island served as an early hotbed for professional soccer in the U.S. Pawtucket, Providence, and New Bedford all fielded American Soccer League franchises in the 1920s. But Fall River was the nexus of soccer culture, situated at the heart of New England's textile-producing region in the early 20th century. Over 100 cotton mills dotted the landscape within the physical boundaries of the city. By 1920, 4 million spindles and 89,000 looms were in operation. Each mill required hundreds of workers to man the various machines throughout their operations, paying out $31 million in wages each year by 1920. To satisfy the need for workers, the area became a key destination for tens of thousands of European immigrants. Between 1870 and 1910, no population center in the United States had a higher percentage of foreign-born residents than Fall River and the surrounding cities. Rather than assimilating toward baseball as in other flashpoints of immigration, the high concentration of European-born residents caused soccer to take root early. By 1888, the city was already supporting championship teams. Once Fall River's team owner, Sam Mark, built the professional club its own venue, trips to Mark Stadium became as patriotic as any other sporting event in the country. Players were household names discussed regularly in the sports sections of regional papers and the New York Times alike. Crowds of 15,000 came out to watch the Fall River Marksmen play both league matches and U.S. Open Cup fixtures, dazzled by some of the most technical professional soccer being played around the world during the period. Five players of the 1930 U.S. World Cup team played at some point in Fall River. Key forward Bert Pattenode, the first player in World Cup history to score a hat trick, was born in Fall River and played three of his professional seasons in the city. Billy Gonsalves was born across the state line in nearby Portsmouth, playing alongside Pattenode in both Mark's stadium and for the national team. Goalkeeper Jimmy Douglas played two seasons prior to the World Cup for the Marksmen. Wing half Andy Ald played most of his career for rivals Providence and Pawtucket, though he played one season immediately after the World Cup for the Marksmen's successors in the revamp Pro League. Similarly, Team captain Tom Flory also spent the majority of his career playing for Providence in New Bedford, only joining Old for a sojourn in Fall River after the World Cup. All 11 men that suited up for the U.S. team in Uruguay played at Mark Stadium throughout their careers, either as members of the Marksmen or as visiting rivals. The Marksmen were the most successful team of the period, winning 6 of 10 American Soccer League titles and 4 U.S. Open Cups. Why, though, did legendary sports promoter and owner Sam Mark build the stadium bearing his name outside Fall River City limits on the other side of the state line? The answer lies in Massachusetts' puritanical past in which blue laws were enacted that included the prohibition of spectator sports on Sundays. 
Rather than compete against these laws like some organizations, Mark instead found land just across the border into Rhode Island, where no such legislative restriction existed against Sunday matches. The marksmen dominated throughout the 1920s, squaring off against teams along the Atlantic seaboard, as well as holding their own in exhibitions against touring European squads. Depression economics, however, caused Mark to relocate his team to New York in 1931. This was not the end of the story for soccer at Mark's stadium, though, as the Ponta Delgada Club took over the venue. The stadium did not remain soccer-specific for long, as auto racing was introduced in 1939 in an attempt to increase profitability. As the venue fell into decay by the 1950s, the legendary bleachers were pulled down to create a drive-in theater on the site. Now, all that remains there is a soccer field-shaped patch of unkempt grass behind chain-link fencing as nature reclaims the hallowed ground where Billy Gonzalez, John Clarkie Souza, and other early American World Cup stars once delighted thousands in the shadow of the nearby mill.